Welcome to Radical Remembering with psychologists Dr. Narissa and Dr. Buki. This is a weekly conversation where we explore the ways we've internalized oppression and consider what it really means to be liberated. Each episode will leave you with intimate knowledge of the liberation process, sprinkle a little healing magic, and leave you with wisdom for your journey. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Radical Remembering. Today we have the fabulous Simone Arthur with us. Um, Y'all know we've talked to her, I've mentioned her in a couple of episodes. We are leaning more into the conversation around ancestral practices today. So let me pass it to my co-host, Larissa. Uh, Go ahead. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So you've definitely heard me mention how instrumental Simone has been in my own development, my spiritual practices. So a lot of what you see here and have heard here have been as, you know, was influenced by Simone. So I'm glad to have you here today. So let's start with Simone. Let's let's hear who you are, how you got here. Oh, wow. We got enough time. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, how did I get here? You know, this spiritual journey actually started for me when I was in my mid-20s. And I'm now in my late 40s, so you guys could do the math, the addition and the subtraction. And, you know, I, I, I describe it as it was one bright, sunny, summer, Sunday, afternoon and I had decided to you know go and get baptized under the spiritual Baptist faith which is which was founded in Trinidad and Tobago and I just thought that you know with this practice you know they go and drop you in the water three times father son and Holy Ghost and then you come out and you're done but you know us black folks or us indigenous people we have to go through it you know so there were a few sessions where I had to, you know, just to shorten up the story, had to stand in front of the altar and go into deep meditation. And during that time, I, I remember, you know, saying like, why am I here? This, I'm hot. I'm the, I start complaining, you know? And then it just happened. My grandmother appeared and she could hear me and I could hear her, I could see her. And I started bawling because first of all, my grandmother is here. She's She's gone and she's talking to me and I can hear and she can, so, you know, and, and from there, this gift of me being a medium and an intuitive reader and a spiritualist started. And my love language with the ancestors um, incorporates all of my senses, meaning I can hear them, I can feel them, I can see them, I can taste them, I can smell them, you know, and it became a complete lifestyle change for me because this is not something that you can just put away and you know pick back up this is my everyday life so being in my late 20s whereas all I used to do was you know put on a mini skirt and go to a sofa fat every weekend you know whether it's winter or not I had to incorporate having an altar in my home learning how to dress candles how to pray how to meditate how to honor my ancestors and I still kept that a secret. My family didn't know I had this gift. Some close friends knew I had it because it benefited them and they wanted information to come to me. But then, you know, in my mid to early 40s, spirit was like, so when you going to put us first? Because they were always in the background. When are you going to put us first? And I was like, not yet, not yet, not yet. They was like, okay. And then my life started to fall apart. And so in 2019, I was like, okay, I hear you. And that was the birth of Readings by Soul where I fully sat in my truth and become the spiritualist that I am. And I started to do my work. So in a nutshell, that's, that's how it started. Nice, nice, nice. And then I'll, I'll, I'll one second, Buki. So, and then that, and that's, we met at the same time, December, 2019. I, I was going yes, to, yes. yes. Yeah. I was going to, and I, I mentioned this, I, I feel, I feel like I gave the full story. If not, I'll give an abbreviated version. I was, my sister-in-law was selling, she sells like raw foods every now and again. And she was selling some food at an event in, was it on Tompkins? In, in, in Bedside, Brooklyn. And so I went and I saw this table and I forgot what you saw, your, your sign said, Simone. Maybe it said readings by Simone. And I was like, um, all right. Like <laughs> I didn't have a burning question. I had to think about like what I even wanted to ask. And I was like, maybe work. And then I, I spoke to Simone and Simone, and it was it was funny in hindsight because I felt like, mm, I mean, I'm sure she has a gift. I think she's often what she said to me. Right. So but it turned out that every single thing that she said was accurate. 
Buki, if I didn't share this part with you, it was, she was saying that I was going to get a promotion. I, I had already known that I was going to get a promotion. She said that there would be a man who would really be rooting for me. And at the time, the department chair wasn't even a man. I was in academia, wasn't even a man at the time, but he really did root for me for the, for the time in which I was, you know, uh, in leadership there. And, but she said I wouldn't last a year. And I was like, why would I be in this position? I don't, why would I not last a year here? So I'm like, yeah, she's, She's cool and all, but you know, <laughs> so what I saw afterwards a year, a year later, I was like, oh my God, like she's, she was on point with everything. Right. And so when I was looking for a house, I, I also wanted a little bit more insight, like just cause I, I was here, there and everywhere. Am I leaving New York? Am I going to go to New Jersey? Cause the houses were a little bit cheaper and blah, blah, blah. And we, and we had a conversation. And I think actually what really got me, Simone, is that you were telling me that I had some vitamins that I needed. I'm like, oh my God, I really do. And then I started taking the vitamins and then I've been better since, right? And then you also then told me when I was going to get the house, it was going to be the end of March. And I was, you know, so long story short, when I, when I came back in, in my birthday of 2021, after I resigned from that position, she had seen me resigning from, I was like at a crossroads, like what's next? And so I spoke to Simone again. And here is is really for me where my, I guess, I mean, my great grandmother, Granny Nora had showed up in um, for a few readings before, one or two readings before, but it was here that I was like, I should, I should, I really want to learn a little bit more how I do my own ancestral practice. And so that's when um, Simone has been instrumental for me. Buki, you were going to say something? Well, I mean, I think we just want to take a pause and just marinate on just like y'all's connection. Like, so what was that like when you hear her talk about that like that? Say that again. I'm sorry. I said, what is it like when you hear Narissa kind of like recant like her perspective? You know, I, I remember that first time I met her because she was my only, the only person who uh, came to see me on that day it was a, a holiday pop-up shop. And everybody, you know, had all these customers coming in and folks buying from them. And I was just sitting there like, oh, uh, okay. And she was the only one. And, you know, it is still very humbling to hear stories like Norissa, when folks will repeat the conversations that we would have and they would say, this happened as she said it would. That happened as she said. Like people, it would be in, you know, unfolding in the middle of it and it would get a phone call. This is unfolding right now, just as you said it was. And, and, you know, this is years later, I'm doing this, it's still humbling, it's still humbling. And, and I don't think I would ever get out of that space, you know? And I remember talking to my spiritual mother and she would say to me, she's like, Simone, you, you never lose that feeling of, wow, I can actually do this thing. I can actually do this, you know? And it still floors me to this day. I remember the time I had a reading with one lady and nothing I said she knew she was, it was a disaster for me because I would, I, she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. That makes no sense. Um, yeah, no, that never happened. Two weeks later, I got a text. She says everything, she got confirmation of everything I told her. Two weeks later. And I had to breathe a sigh of relief because I remember during that time I was having a argument with spirit. You have me talking a bunch of shit here. The <laughs> like she doesn't know what I'm talking about. Spirit's like, repeat what I tell you. Do not embellish anything. Say what I'm telling you. And I am Simone, the human being is falling apart. But spiritually, I knew I had to follow orders and obey. And that is one of the key lessons I have learned doing this work. You have to trust and obey. When you don't do those two things, you will run yourself into trouble um, on your spiritual journey. So every now and again, I get those tests. I, they still test me, you know, to see if, you know, my head is blown up with this work. They still run a test for me and say, all right, okay, you passed. But well, it's still I just love the way you talk about your relationship with spirit. And like, I have so many questions that I just want to get into in like a second. But one of the, my favorite things about what you said is like my love language with the ancestors, right? That's just so, I mean, like, I don't know if you caught that, Narissa. I was like, yeah. that's so bad. I'm like, I want a love language with the ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all do in our own way, you know. It is just what, it, it, and it's similar to, you know, our intimate relationships, our relationship with our children, you know. 
I'm not a mother, but I know if you have children, you have to love each of them a different way because not they're not all the same um, human being. So whereas one may be touchy and feeling, mommy, mommy, the other one be like, yeah, you good? I good? You good? All right. Cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So with, with the ancestors now, you have to know what is the relationship you're going to have with them. What is that going to look like? What do they need from you? And what do you need from them, right? And my ancestors, they are very territorial with me, right? And, you know, we have conference calls and, you know, I have to set aside time to talk to them. Sometimes I do have to kind of put my neck, my foot on their neck when, you know, things that I'm working on and I find they're a little bit like a bit, all I'm like, okay, so what's going on here? Because we had a discussion. This is what you wanted me to do in Europe. So where are we? Like, I talk to them as if they're actually human beings, right? I, I, that's the relationship I have. With. So, you know, someone else relationship with them may be a little bit more emotional. Maybe, you know, they're more attached to them a different way. You have to, you will have to create that energy with them. It's no different as if, you know, you meet someone and you guys started to date. And you got to figure out how to love this person. This person got to figure out to love you, but it comes natural because it, it is a, you know, it's a connection, right? So when I talk about the love language, that is what it is. And then too, because these are spirits, you have to know how they're going to communicate. With you. If they're going to communicate with you through your, your hearing, your seeing, your smelling, your tasting, or your feeling, which speaks to your gut feeling and that, intuitive energy that you get that's them right so it is a process for me it wasn't a process everything came down one time I was hearing them seeing them see everything and that I had to learn to control because I will be out grocery shopping and they'll start talking and I would literally turn around to be like yeah but I don't know and then I had to remember there's nobody there that that everybody else could see so it would look like I'm crazy you know so it, 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 is a, it is a bonding of a relationship and it takes work and it may change over time too, because my relationship with them has changed as I've gone deeper into my spiritual work. You know, last year I traveled to Nigeria and I got the full hand of Ifa. I was initiated into Ifa and, uh, you know, I'm a priestess. That is another learning curve for me because that relationship is something completely different sometimes with your relationship with your ancestors because none of my ancestors were initiated well the ones that I know into any African traditional way too. so there's that separation too that you have to manage but yeah that's that's what I do. Simone did you come from a Christian background oh yes so so what um, what was that like for you well I was born in Barbados and the the island where I am right now and the island is predominantly Anglican so I was baptized in the Anglican church Christ the King and my grandmother, she was, you know, top dog in the church. Um, she was head of the mother's union. She was the usher. She was this and that. So it was expected that her grandchildren would, you know, that who the ones that were living on island would be part of that church. And so I was baptized there. And then, you know, growing up, we had to, you know, go to church every Sunday. My sister and I, my brother, that was neither here nor there, but you know, the politics of raising boy children in the Caribbean. And so then one day we were watching TV and my grandmother called my mother and then my mother came to tell because you guys have to go to confirmation class. So I was confirmed in the church and, you know, eventually I came out of that. You become a certain age, you go to church. So yeah, my family is, is Anglican and that's how we were raised. I always wonder if my grandmother was alive, uh, what would she think of the work that I'm doing? And although in the spiritual realm, we have discussed it and she was like, I understand that you have to do what you have to do, but I still wonder, you know, you're on that other side, so you're saying things in a different way. If she was here, what would, you know, her reaction be? I'm not too sure it would have been, she would have embraced, but, you know, growing up, you would hear individuals like myself, we're no good, we're obia women, we do bad things to keep men, you know, the, the, the negative rhetoric. But that is something I just had to, and, and that is one of the reasons why too, that I did not tell my family that this is my gift because I didn't want to hear all that in my, you know, but you got to sit in your truth. Mm -hmm. What would you, you say? 
Mm -hmm. What would you say to, to people who are, so we actually had a recent conversation about, so let's say someone grew up in a Catholic church or even a non-denominational Christian church, and they're very new to wanting to like explore ancestral practices. You, you were sharing something recently about in the Catholic church that there, there are already semblances of ancestor reverence in the church. Of course, when they honor um, Mary during Holy Week, Mary's an ancestor. When you go into the Catholic church, there's a certain section, section, I don't know what it's called, where they have the lights and you can go and put a light for someone who's passed. So that's ancestral veneration. That's honoring your ancestors. When they talk about Jesus, Jesus didn't come back yet, but you still talk about him. You praise him. You want to live a life that he has preached about. You're honoring him. That's also ancestral veneration. But we know the politics of this thing when it comes to people of color and our traditional way of honoring our spiritual and religious beliefs is always looked in a negative light. And, and we know why that is. And even some of, of, you know, Black folks, you know, go along with that narrative. Um, as I described, you know, as to why I kept my spiritual gift secret. And I don't get into those discussions anymore. I tell people who I am and that's it. I don't explain how my gift works. I don't try to, to justify what I'm doing. This is who I am. You know, I can't tell you how I can do what I can do. It happens. But the sweetest part of this thing is we all have our intuition that we can work, right? We all have that gut feeling when we know something is right, something is off, especially mothers with their children. And then that even gets heightened after you give birth, you know? So it, we just have it at different levels, but if we utilize it, it becomes stronger and stronger. And then it makes our life so much easier because the universe has given us clues as to how we can move forward in our lives and do better. Let me tell you, some of the, the, the folks who work what best with their intuition, you see them drug dealers, they, they do well with their intuition because, and criminals too, because, and good ones, let's just say that, until they run, their lucks run out. They, they will tell you, yeah, my gut tell me don't go and do this thing. I ain't going, I ain't care much money out there. And then next thing you know, you turn around, the police raid, you know? So th that is just a, 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 you know, a bad example, but a good example of how when you trust your intuition and you move with that, how well it works, mm -hmm. right? And all of these religions, these Christian-based religions, I should say, in some way, shape, or form, honor their ancestors. But just when it comes to anything coming out of Africa, you know, it's, it's tarnished. Mm -hmm. But we're working on correcting it bit by bit by bit. Mm -hmm. That's good. I, what, what I said to my friend last night, I said, because it, it's, it's a conversation of liberation as far as I'm concerned, right? So getting free. And so it's, it's about unlearning, right? So if you've learned this, you have to unlearn that. And, and in this process of unlearning comes this metamorphosis into who you want to be and what you do want to practice, right? So I think that, that, that I mean, it, and it's something that I say all the time, but I think it's about going back to, I say going back to the land, right? So going back to the culture, your own culture, your own even if it's not your immediate culture, but what you knew, because because a lot of us have that, and this is the conversation that we had, the, the woman is Dominican and Puerto Rican, multicultural, really, multiracial. And so for a few generations, because of colonization, because of the church and how the church is used in colonization, she's like, but, but what are our practices? I don't know our practices, right? So sometimes, and what I hear from your story and what, what, I, what I see in my own journey, it's like, Sometimes we might actually have to go back a few generations back to, you know, and then like a few, few, maybe seven to That's seven. That's in Copa. You have to go back and fetch it. Exactly. It. You have to go back and fetch it. Because all it is, is that when we moved from Africa to the Western Hemisphere, right? And wherever we, um, wherever they placed us, we adapted to our environment. And we did what we had to do to survive, right? So even if, he first started in Africa, came over to the Western Hemisphere, right? When you, it is practiced in Cuba and in, in Puerto Rico and in South America, but of course they made their, their changes, you know, and, and, but it's all the same thing. 
you know i don't go back and forth of well we do it this way with the orishas we do it that way i'm getting to that we the adjustments were made to suit the environment and they continue because that's who we are we are not one pot of just unseasoned meat <laughs> putting all kinds of seasonings in there and, and vegetables and and carbohydrates you know, and make this beautiful pepper pot of black folks or people of color that we are, right? So it is for her now. And I, you know, I'm sitting here, I don't know who this person is, but she has women on her mother's side who were practicing be after church. Yep. This and, is- and they used her the one, one, and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go into a reading here, but it's coming. One of her eternal grandmothers or great grandmothers was known to use herbs to heal. Mm-hmm. In the African American tradition, that's who do, right? Mm-hmm. So she needs to talk to some people and look back, and she was sick because uh, she has things that happen to her too, and it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense because it's just ancestral memory kicking up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. happens to all of us but we can't we can't pinpoint it sometimes mm-hmm. you know i can't wait to it. share this with her yeah um yeah so yeah that's it's it's so rich and i think it's important for us not to see at you know because because it living in a eurocentric frame where you know it's easy to see them as opposing to see christianity as opposing to ancestral practices but really my ancestors, I haven't had a Bible in years, but my ancestors a couple months ago was telling me to get a Bible and I got a Bible and I haven't done everything that they that they want me to do just yet. But the first thing that I opened to in the New Testament, it was like, it was, this one was the son of this one was the son of this one. And I counted, it was like 15 generations. If that wasn't important, right? If that wasn't important, then they wouldn't have, you know, have started with, with all the generations and, and different things yeah. like that. So it's really not, antithetical or opposite to Christian practices, it could be used in in conjunction with. Yes, of course. When I mentioned earlier the spiritual Baptist um, practice that was originated out of Trinidad and Tobago, they do both. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. they have the Christian piece and and or the the African piece and they incorporated the Christianity into it because they still read it for the Bible. They still believe in Jesus that he's coming back. But when you go in these churches, it's African drumming, they're burning incense, they're ringing their bells, you know, they're, they're chanting, there's something called adoption, which I'm not going to do it now because I haven't done it in a long time. This is going to be hard. <laughs> but where they're, where they're, you know, thumping their feet, the women are dressed in a uniform and their heads are tied. There's a ritual called mourning where you go into seclusion. The minimum is seven days. You don't eat, drink. Well, no, sorry. You eat and you drink limited foods. You can't see because the, the your the mother, your spiritual mother create these bands she covers your eyes with. You can't speak to people unless it's your nurse or your spiritual mother. And it's deep meditation. You ain't taking no showers, you ain't brushing your teeth, you ain't reading or watching no TV. Deep meditation. And and when you go into those spaces, you come out a different person, you know. And, and it's okay because on my ancestral altar is a Bible. My grandmother, she's like, this is what I want on my altar. She wants her Bible. And well, it's my Bible, but it's there and it's open. So I have to honor that. I am not going to bring Ifa to my grandmother. That was not her practice. And I'm not going to disrespect her like that. And, and that is not up for discussion, right? So I understand still having that Christian energy there. And I honor that too. Because let me tell you, you see the book of Psalms and the book of Proverbs. Sometimes you recite certain verses. That could move a spell. That could shift a ritual. That could shift energy. Don't sleep on Psalm 35 if somebody do you wrong. (laughs) A little tidbit there, (laughs) right? And in some cases, Psalm 23 could be comforting. Though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I can fear no evil. You are in the midst of your life turning upside down. But this little scripture is telling you, you will fear nothing. That's empowering, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we can still use these things. And there's nothing wrong with that. So Buki, you look like you had a question, Starry. 
Yeah, I have. A, I, I mean, someone I've just been fascinated with so many things that you've been saying over the past few, however long we've been talking. Two things. When you refer to, when you refer to spirit, are you referring to one spirit? Are you referring to a multitude? Say more about like, wait, who are you, who are you referring to when you say spirit? Well, I use spirit, but you know, I walk with several different people. And there, there is two sects to this. This is my spirit guides, right? Who is an energy that will decide to walk with me because for some reason they love something, right? And we all have them. And then there's my ancestors, right? Who would probably, who shows up for me is my grandmother, who is my mother's mother. Recently, and this is pretty wild, I was doing a yoni scene. And my paternal grandparents showed up during my yoni scene. I was like, really, granny and granddaddy? <laughs> we can we can do this somewhere else, you know. But they were they were they were they were not happy with me because I was not honoring them the way I was honoring my maternal ground. Mm -hmm. So you know, and in my reading, I would get messages from either my spirit guides or my ancestors who would give me information on the person. And or if you are so lucky, I think that may have happened with Doris a few times. Your ancestor will show which even becomes more interesting. And sometimes your ancestor may show up, but you may not know that person because this is an ancestor from way back when, but they're able to say certain things to you that, you know, of course I would not have done, but they will know and able to guide you and, 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 and give you protection and, and advice and whatever you need. And then that interaction becomes very interesting um, because, you know, I've had situations where mothers and because and, I, I recognize too that my work is connected a lot to women. Right. So I have a lot of grandmothers and mothers showing up in the readings and, you know, they'll come and they'll say what they have to say. And then the reading is over and they're still there. So I'm like, OK, the reading is done. And you have to go. And some of them don't want to go. Because this is the first time they've had the opportunity to show up, right? Because traditionally, we are not, traditionally, we're not honoring them as we should, as Black folks. So they want to come and hang out. They want to go shopping with me. They want to have drinks. They want to go to the beach. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, so I have my own ritual, cleansing rituals that I have to have them to move on until maybe the person books me another time. Right? So these, when I talk about spirit, that is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about my, my own personal spiritual guide, my own ancestors. And then, you know, if, if I'm working with someone, reading someone at the time, you know, their, their people will show up to me. So Simone, let me just make so sure, I, let me try, I got, I understand what you're saying. So when you use the term spirit, spirit says, sometimes that's, be, that's what your spiritual guide is saying. Sometimes yeah. your ancestors are saying. But it's never, it's never what the person's ancestor is saying. If I'm reading them. So if I'm reading them, yes, so it's their ancestors will show up. Right. Right. But in the spirit, it, it, it can be any of the, any yes. of the, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have a question for you, Buki, if you don't mind. Oh, right now, I, should, I like, we, do you want to wait till after my other questions for some more? Oh, go ahead. Other questions for so well, the other thing you were saying, right, because when you were talking earlier about the um, like not being able to share with your family early, right, when you discover your gift um, and having to keep that to yourself a little bit. So how then, given the fact that in some ways, it's, in some ways, like when you talk about it's like you are in the closet, <laughs> right, with you. I, I say that, you know, I touch this. It's, it's exactly. That's what, I'm, that's what my, my queer mind went, went to immediately around it. But what I was thinking though is like, and, and that's hard, right? It's like this piece around like which part of yourself you can show all of those. What, how, how then, like part of what I'm thinking about is like, given how intentional I believe that um, one has to be in terms of cultivating and cultivating this gift, how then, and I mean concretely, how then did you cultivate your ability to like really tune in when you were in the closet? Right. Well, the lucky thing for me is my family lives in Bar lives in Barbados and I live in New York. And, you know, I have my own place. So that made the process easy. And then when I come home, it's only for a vacation. It's a short period of time. And, you know, I'm hanging out. I'm having a good time. And, you know, when I head back to New York. There was just this one time, though, 
Whereas when I mention the ritual of mourning on the spiritual baptism, um, you get these messages that when you come out of that ritual, that you, there's things that you have to do. One of the things I had to do was to hold what the spiritual baptist call is a thanksgiving service. This is where, you know, you give an offering, you know, a spiritual, you lay out a table and give an offering and people who come, you know, they take from the table. There's a spiritual table full of food, of bread and, and, and vegetables and fruit and candles and a very spiritual table. Your spiritual mother prepares it with her signs and, you know, you, you, you do a blessing around it and to put it in layman terms. So anyhow, it came up that I had to do this Thanksgiving and I had to do it in Barbados and I had to do it on my mother's property. So, you know, I came to my mom and I said, I said, listen, mother, you know, I, you know, I got to do this service, right? She was like, okay, so what does that mean? So, you know, my mother is very, how things are going to look, right? That's who she is. And I, and she's a Gemini. So I told her that we have to invite Archbishop Granville Williams. So she went up a little bit. And she's like, oh, so he runs one of the, well, he's passed on now. But at the time, he ran one of the biggest spiritual Baptist churches on the island. But he was respected. He was respected, right? So although people didn't really care for his religion, they honored him because he carried himself so, you know, as a distinguished man. So when I said that, then she was like, okay, we, we could do this, you know? And so that part of it, you know, they kind of, they were like, okay with that. And, but the other part now of me reading and lighting candles and burning incense and doing bush baths and drinking bush tea, it gets really weird, you know, some, even now sometimes, you know? But I had to, 2019 came, and I had no choice but to be like, okay, so this is what it is. You either take it or not. And, you know, I didn't even discuss it with her. I, I, you know, I came back to New, I came back to Barbados last year and she didn't even know I was doing readings while I was, she didn't know. And I came back to New York. I came back to Barbados and, you know, she needed help here. So I just shifted my readings to Barbados and I just act like, this is what it is. We haven't had a discussion about it. She just know this is when I lock away in a room, she can't come and knock on the door, although she's still there. And uh, people get kicked up to that sometimes because they get to see my personal life, you know, oh, that's your mother, right? But I just, I just, I'm just living with it, you know? And I, you know, when I, when I, when I look at it, I just say, okay, listen, this is what it is. If you want to ask me a question, ask me a question. But I just came out with it. I just, I just live, you know? I can't compare that to someone, you know, who is gay and coming out of the closet. I mean, I understand that has to be deep discussions and all that. And, and it, it's similar, but it's not the same still. But I just live, you know? And sometimes so I'm working on my patients. If you're going to ask me a dumb question, I may not respond diplomatically. So I just, I just work with it, you know? I, she doesn't ask me too much about it, I guess, because, you know, when she wants this money from me, she gets it now. I feel like sometimes I'm her drug dealer child. <laughs> she doesn't want to know, but the money is available. <laughs> Part of what you're... Sorry, Ms. Simone, finish your thought. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I you just think... Model? I'm just like, you should be a model. You don't agree, Narissa? Yes, yes. Yes! No one has ever stopped you and asked you. Oh, people ask me all the time. I have, I have a, there was a period in my life where I was exploring whether I was going to go down that path, but I don't have the patience for like makeup and like all the stuff that they do. It's just literally, it was a choice of like, are you going to go to grad school or are you going to pursue a modeling career? And I was like, I'm going to go to grad school. Thank you very much. But go ahead. Go ahead. That's just a but part of it, I think I'm coming back to like this idea of like our liberation journey. Part of what is like what you're sharing, Simone, that I think is like really important for us and certainly for our audience to be holding is the reactions people in our lives have when we choose our own liberation journey, right? When we choose and say we're going to walk in our own path, we're going to um, radically remember, we're going to own our own ancestral practices. That not everybody in your life is going to be like high five. People, some people are gonna be freaked out by that. People are gonna have yeah. reactions to that. Yeah. Right? And how and how are we gonna manage it? What are you gonna do about that? Do you stay in the closet? Do you find your ways in which you're gonna like, you know what I'm saying? So like I, 
I really appreciate you just being able to share that with us because given where you are in your own game, for, for you to be like, this isn't all peaches and like peaches and cream and like my family, like, you know, there's still some like, like some avoidance, right? Yeah. Um, used to manage this, right? Given yeah. people's anxiety about it, right? So I just appreciate it, um, you know, sharing around, around that. It, it's not easy. And I have some clients who are in that position still, you know, and I, and I tell them, listen, this is a process, right? And you have to take it one step at a time. However, I have to also say, depending on your spiritual energy around you, sometimes they don't give you the time. They don't give you the time, right? I, I have some clients whose children are spiritually gifted. And they don't have a choice but to accept these children as the way they are. They, and, and they will book a session with me like, small. Oh, she did I think one of them is five or six years old. She did this and she did this. What the hell am I dealing with? I'm like a gifted child. So this is, these are the things you have to do as she's going through this situation. You know, I have another client. I had to come down on her too. She's like, I don't know about this. I said, what do you don't know about? Your, your kid right now is having some medical issues and this is what you have to do. Because what happens to it starts to affect you physically. And that used to happen to me too. I used to get sick. Oh. And then I go to the doctor. Mm. He can't see nothing wrong with you. Mm. Yeah. You got headaches. You can't sleep. You can't do this. You're losing weight. And then what becomes, and this is where you, you and Orissa's part comes in, where mental health and spirituality comes together. Right. And that is where my work comes in now is to find a, a mental health person who is also understanding of the spiritual aspect to work with this person. And there, you know, there are very few of you I have this understanding, but we need more because I got clients in Ohio. If you in New Jersey, I can't connect you with that client because of this whole license thing and you can't practice cross. You know, I know he gone into some past conversation, what you asked, but that is where this piece is, is important because for somebody like myself to where I had to battle all of that, where spirit doesn't have patience. Like we need you to be doing this. Now. You need to be doing the work. And if you don't, that could become a mental health situation uh -huh. and you could end up locked away somewhere. And that is why, you know, we're going to talk about this, but the retreat that I host in Barbados, Sacred Conversations with Our Ancestors, we actually have a sit-down session talking about mental health and spirituality. And this is where I work with Ia Ife Michelle, who's a licensed mental health therapist and also a Lukumi priestess and who understands both worlds, right? And help folks to identify certain things that they may be going through mentally, which could be a spiritual situation. So, yeah. Simone, I'm hearing also in, in, in hearing about your liberation process, your journey, ritual, and, and ritual is something I'm, I'm also recently being drawn to and to learn more about. I'm even reading Maladoma Somi's book on, on ritual, right? So I hear ritual and I'm thinking of it and hearing you speak as a mechanism of liberation, as a mechanism of, you know, coming back into one's own culture and different things like that. What, what role has ritual played for you? If we're looking at this through the lens of liberation, what role has ritual played for you in this like reclamation of self? Oh, a huge role. I can't survive as a spiritualist without doing my rituals. And so there, that, that's another thing too, because some people are taught rituals, right? For me, spirit teaches me rituals. So I would sit down or I'll be somewhere and they'll say, okay, Simone, the next time you need to do X, Y, and Z or X, Y, and Z is happening. I'm in the Caribbean. Eh? So you're going to see all kinds of things flying. Around. It's crazy with these bugs. But spirit teaches me how to do my own rituals. If I have to take a bath, spirit would tell me, okay, Simone, you need to take this bath now at this time. And we want you to do this, 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 or get these, these, these herbs to do it. This needs to happen. We need you to set down your light 
put down your markings on, on wherever I'm going to lay, I lay down for the rest of the night till these lights are up. Spirit teaches me my own ritual. Others have to be taught, which, Narissa, I, I prefer. Because, you know, you're in this space of spirit teaching you, and you're like, I'm doing this right. Is this going to be the right way? Am I going to hurt myself? And, and you don't, because spirit is teaching you what you need to do. Do you understand? I remember a time I, I was mandated to do these set of rituals, and I had to do them over a period of maybe like four weekends. And I utilize a former friend of mine, um, her basement. And I'm doing these rituals. I'm doing it. And I was like, oh, shoot. She said, what happened? I says, when I'm doing these things, I'm supposed to face east. If we in facing east, after all that time, that means we got to do this over, right? Because obviously in a basement, it's dark. You can't tell who's night from day. So she pulls out her phone. And I'm like, I'm not even going to focus on that. If it is, we got to do it over. We just got to do it. And she pulls out her phone and pull up the Compass app. And she said, oh my God. I was like, what happened? She's like, you have been facing east all this time. Listen, the tears were in the back of my eyes. Because, and I'm tearing up now too, because I don't know where this is coming from. But wherever it's coming from is a safe space. I can't explain it to you, but it makes sense to me. And they prove it to me over and over and over again. See, when we got you. When that ha I would never forget that because I was like, that means I was strictly moving my spirit. I had positioned myself in a way and I was just moving my spirit. And then I was like, oh no, I forgot. You didn't forget, Simone. You are in it. And because you are being obedient and you are trusting your way, even though sometimes you're like, oh, no. I still keep going because I have to do that trust. And when she says, she was evil, she sat down and be like, I can't believe this is happening. And, and she's like, you were facing East all the time. And I got confirmation of what that was because I met a Haitian man and he was telling me, I don't know, he got locked up and he had to call on the spirits to come and get him out. And he said he took his light and da, da, da. he said he faced East. He said, Anytime you're doing work, you got to face East. And that was confirmation. And then later on, I learned East is spirit. When the Muslims pray, where do they face East? Because we are more alike than we are not. So true. Trust. Trust is like an important part what? of this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Similarly, I was, one of my ancestors was telling me, they, they had given me ingredients for a bath, right? And so of the things that we've talked about prior, Simone, and I do want you all to also mention your course. I, I haven't been, I haven't jumped on the, like the floor washes and the baths and, and I've known, like they've been saying to me, ritual, ritual, do it through the floor washes, gave me all the ingredients and two of the ingredients. I was like, what is that? Like that? And it, and it, they also, well, one of them seemed like odd. And the other one was an amaryllis flower and I couldn't find amaryllis dried anywhere. I couldn't find. And then I went out my back door to go for a morning walk. And my mom had planted a a, flat, a a plant pot, right? And it had only been growing up green leaves. But that the day after or the day, something like that, it was an amaryllis, a yellow amaryllis flower. And I was like, of course, I didn't act on it. And so I was like, well, where am I going to find this amaryllis like now, right? And I was feeling the urging again this week. The flower that was dead had one had one um, amaryllis like bloom on it, and I plucked it and I and I made my bath earlier this week. This morning again, I was walking out. The flower that was dead, another another bloom from it again too. But it's a, I say that to 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 really confirm and and affirm and stand with you, and also saying like it's such an act of faith and trust, and you get the guidance if you are attuned to it. Yes. And some people would be like, how do you get there? Like, that doesn't happen to me. Something happens to you. You just have not recognized it yet or pinpointed yet. And that is okay. Give yourself time and give yourself grace. Everyone has a different their curve, right? And sometimes your ancestors show up for you. Sometimes ancestors too could be quiet people, you know, depending on who you work with. They will come in fix something for you and you and you were wondering like how did this I was trying to figure this out what am I going to do for the longest time and it just happened that's them that's them showing up so we might be getting all these messages and da, 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 as someone else and they have that too with some clients some there's like I don't hear I don't feel 
maybe that's not where you are with them yet. Maybe they're showing up for you in other ways. When you went in for the mortgage and the mortgage people told you no the first time, but, but say, come back in six months, do this and come back in six months. You're going to do what you had to do and come back in six months. That door was open, right? And, and so they start to, to, to just clear up things for you. That's that. The Christians will say, God, that's okay. That's him too, right? But just recognize they show up for you in different ways. And when you are intentional with the way you move around in your life and, and the way you speak to yourself, speak to the goals and dreams that you have, they will show up and do what they have to do. I have one person, she says to me, Simone, I haven't done jack with my ancestors in a long time. But this loan that was giving me a headache all of a sudden came through. I said, that's them. While you and your maze or haze, they stay haven't stopped working because all they have to do is to focus on the children that they left and to see about them. And we as spiritually strongly believe if people of color go back to who they are, go back to the earth, go back to the, the, the elements, we would not be having all some of these struggles that we're having now. We wouldn't, but that's another question. Simone, one of the things, I mean, this, this thing you just said is just so, it's powerful, right? That their, their focus is on the children that they've left, right? And when you teared up a few minutes ago, and you just talked about that sense of like this piece of feeling so like gotten, like they have your back, like they like they are with you. Um, it reminds me of the thing like I think when Cynthia was on our show weeks ago, Narissa, where she also talked about like like walking and like feeling the like the arms, right? And you know, I'm the most um, I don't call a novice in experience. Like I'm just I'm I'm new to this in a way that you and Narissa are obviously not. One of the things I'm curious about, Nurse Simone, because right, the thing you kept on saying is this piece around my paying attention and listening, right? And, and I think people, when people are like more expert in things, like you say, like people who are like, no, like what, like, what does that mean? What is that? Right. So can you say, when you say, for example, like, you know, like you're not there yet, but when people are saying they want to start to listen, listen to, I think you said in the beginning, it was about listening to intuition. Like, what does that mean? What is that? Like, what, what exactly, if you're being really concrete for, uh, for folks, what does it look like to start to listen? Like, what, like, is it about, like, is it about meditating? Like, can you say more about, like, tuning people's ability? People want to develop their capacity, their ability to listen, right? Yeah. What, does that, what does that look it, it, like? Yeah. Let me start, let me just say, let me put it as simplistic as possible. You are, you meet somebody, right? And the person is all nice and fine. And then something happens. And this feeling comes over you like, this is making sense. Or your gut feeling is like, mm, that's them telling you. Red flag, roll out. But we don't trust that. So we go deeper down the rabbit hole, right? You're on the job. And you just get a feeling. You see a, a promotion up, a job, something up that you qualify for. And you get this feeling, I should apply for that. Something just telling you to apply. That is them. Now, let me say something. Else. You would apply. And let's say you don't get the job. That's okay too. Because what Spirit is trying to tell you, it's time for you to roll out of here. It's time for you to move up. Right? So it's saying to you, and you may have gotten the interview. You could have been shortlisted but you didn't get it, but you were this close. So Spirit is saying the next one you see and you get that same feeling, apply, mm. right? That is them. That is what you trust. That is what you trust. That's what you feel. And it, and it would position you in, 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 in nice spaces to make solid and good decisions about your life. That is them talking to you. Through the feeling, the gut intuition, that little palpitation in your heart, that butterfly feeling, alarms, alarms going off. They talk about butterfly feelings for love. That is nonsense. Yeah, that's a red flag. <laughs> that's another conversation. Yeah. yeah. What if you don't get, what if people like say like, I never get that. If somebody says like, mm -hmm. I never, I never get that. What would you say to them? You do. You, do. you okay. get something. 
You just have not tuned into it. Because some people look for this thing in one way. I have clients, I can't hear us. I can't hear us. You know why you can't hear them? Because they're not talking to you like that. <laughs> they may be talking to you in the numbers that keep showing up. 333, 444, 555, 222. They may be talking to you and you've seen a particular animal showing up all the time. Look and see what that animal means. A dragonfly comes around. It could be your grandmother showing up as a dragon. When something happens, something keeps repeating itself all the time. Pay attention. You have to pay attention. That is us becoming in tune. We have, we have so distanced ourselves from ourselves. Mm. We have to relearn that or learn it again. That's when you, that's when that work starts from in here. You become in tuned within here. You will know what it is. If you're telling me you don't know, that means you've got some work to do. There's some blockages. And don't come telling me if somebody do some sort of work on your done. I think, Simone, too, I think um, it, it's also in, in the practice, right? So the first time you do it, and I think so meditation and, you know, so you can silence out many of the other noises so you can be able to like distinguish between yours, your voice and another voice, but also journaling because we forget so much, right? So journaling so that you can go back to like, for example, I didn't realize until a year after my daughter was born that I had a dream um, just before she got, before I got pregnant of somebody was dropping seeds from the sky. And I, and I kept saying like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe you're entrusting me with this. This is so, I can't believe it. I'm so honored to carry this. I'm so honored to carry it. And when I looked it up, it was talking about pregnancy and new birth, right? So I, in my journaling, I was like, there's going to be a new professional project coming. I'm ready for it. Because in my head, I was like, she's not having no more babies, right? <laughs> but it was a year later that I realized that I had after she was, she was a month old and I was like, Oh my God. Right. So when you, so you are, you, but, and if you go back more regularly, not a whole year, if you go back more regularly, you'll see, Oh, this meant that like, actually when I was buying this house, I had a dream with a snake with two heads that was ch just running after me. And so, and, and I was like, wow, that's crazy. I don't know what that's about. I mean, it sounds like deception, but I don't know. Right. Come to find out the, the, mortgage lender was like trying to like rob me of like $30,000. It was crazy. And I didn't still didn't put it together until after it was like, Oh my God, the dream about the snake happened right before. Bah, bah, bah. So you are, you know, it's like you are getting, if you're, you know, and I, the, I say the meditation and the journaling because there are moments, there are things to ground you and touch points exactly. that you can reference back. And then you, and, and then because you have listened, you get more adept at the signs. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really appreciate that, Narissa, because because I think I, I think that's part of the thing that like I think this piece of what you said of like the that one value of meditation is about helping you distinguish your voice versus their voice, increase your ability to like you know. So I just I love I love concrete things like that because then it allows people to be like, oh yes, like that's you know. So so thank you for sh for sharing that. You said earlier, Narissa, that you had a question for me. What was that? You I'm gonna save that for for the next episode. So, okay. So, so listeners and Simone, we'll, we'll let you hear this after my, my next question for Buki would have been, you know, cause this has been an amazing journey for all of us for, you know, as we continue to think about, well, what is liberation? What does that look like in our life? And so having heard me talk about Simone and, you know, I was also kind of pushing it and Buki was a little, also kind of curious. Buki had the opportunity to speak to Simone and it was actually Buki's idea. Like, let's bring Simone back on the show or whatever. And so I, I just want to hear in, in the next episode, how has that, because in our next episode, it's wrap up of season one. I just want to hear where you are in your liberation journey, how that might have done anything for you with respect to, to all of this. So one last thing, Simone, if in a, in, a, in a sentence or three, what would you say to our listeners about liberation? Because I also know that you're, you're deeply passion, impassioned about, you know, Black liberation. And, you know, and I, I'll, I'll also, because uh, a lot of this also ex applies to many colonized peoples, but what, what would you say about liberation? I mean, you could relate it to anything we've talked about or anything that's in your heart. Liberation for me is becoming more in tune with self. And that takes on many different things. And what has worked for me was really sitting in my truth and being focused on my spiritual work. When you find your purpose and meaning in life, that makes your journey, whatever journey that you're on, emotional freedom, mental freedom, financial freedom, it makes that process easier. 
when you are in tune with you, when you set up your boundaries, you see that B word, boundary, is very important because people know what they can and cannot do. And you stand in that truth of who you are, regardless of what the other world has to say to you, that invites the energy and the pathway for true liberation. I won't get into religion and get into spiritual practices, although to do that is a spiritual uh, movement, but stand in your truth, sit with who you are and be who you want to be. And that is true liberation. That Love is true. It. Love it, love it, love it, and agree wholeheartedly. It it ties in so much of, even Buki, when I'm thinking about our first episode and when we're talking about authenticity and different things like that, and ties in so much of what we've said. So thank you so much, Simone. Oh, one last word. I want you to share. How 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 can people hear more about you? How can oh, they yeah. So yes, I have a website. It's readingsbysimone.com. I'm also on TikTok, which is very addictive. TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Clubhouse under Readings by Simone or Simone Arthur, you'll find. Um, I have a, a course called um, Spirituality and Your Ancestors. It runs for seven weeks where we talk about how you ancestral veneration and how you can use different spiritual practices to help you with that. And I also have a retreat called Sacred Conversations with Our Ancestors, which is held in Barbados. Um, we'll have it in May of 2023, the first weekend in May. And that is where you come on the island for four days. And we just focus on everything, ancestral, veneration, honoring them, paying tribute to them. And yeah, so that's that's where you can come. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. (laughs) I hope you bring me back again. You guys are amazing. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. We're definitely bringing you back again. Thanks for, for, for sharing all your wisdom. I don't know if you had any closing words, Wookie. No, just super grateful, Simone, just for um, having time with you and and like and like uh, Marissa said, just sharing your wisdom with us and with our audience. We really appreciate you. Keep doing the work you do, Mom. We, we love you and we appreciate you. I appreciate too. And I'm here anytime. You know, this is going to be bigger than you guys anticipate. So I hope you guys are ready for the ride. Because this is um to change, change, change. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you've loved what we've had to say, please subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. I'm Dr. Narissa, and you can find me on IG at Dr. Narissa Williams. And I'm Dr. Buki. You can find me on IG at the official Dr. Buki. You can also stay abreast of our latest offerings at our website, radicalremembering.com. <laughs>